No one, and I mean no one, is interested in or takes seriously lectures on border security from Senate Republicans. No one. In one of the most stunning acts of political cowardice in recent American history, a bipartisan border security bill co-authored by a conservative Republican member of this committee was put forward in the U.S. Senate. It would have tightened asylum standards to stop exploitation of the asylum system. It would have surged enforcement resources to the border. It would have meant more expedited removals of those who enter this country unlawfully. It would have empowered the federal government to take the fight to the drug cartels who are laying waste to communities across our country with fentanyl. A bipartisan border security bill co-authored by a conservative Republican member of this committee. And it wasn't just voted down by Senate Republicans, it was denied even a debate on the floor of the United States Senate because the former president of the United States, and he said this publicly, thought it wasn't in his political interest for the nation to be served. It wasn't in his political interest for a bipartisan border security bill to be enacted by Congress. The American people are smart. So all of the performative chest pounding today on border security is utterly disingenuous. When Senate Republicans abrogated their basic governing responsibility and refused even to let us debate and amend that bipartisan border security proposal. The American people see that and understand that. But Mr. Secretary, the American people also see and understand what's happening at the southern border. And just as they see the hypocrisy and cowardice of Senate Republicans on border security. They do not see success in the administration's handling of the crisis at the southern border. And I wonder if you have reckoned fully with the fact that you do not have a good faith partner in the minority party in Congress willing to work with you to advance bipartisan border security legislation. You are going to have to rely on your authorities and it is past time to do so. So to the extent you have additional legal authorities that you can responsibly deploy to control this unacceptable crisis at the southern border that threatens our national security, it is long past time to do so. And that brings me to the budget request, because I can't understand this, Mr. Secretary. It's a $3 billion decrease from fiscal year 24 for CBP. You agree, I presume, that the situation of a southern border is a serious threat to U.S. national security? Um, I do, Senator. We um, okay. and, are, and, and, are, and, and, and that CBP personnel are essential to tackling this crisis, Mr. Secretary? Most certainly. And the President recently commented publicly that there were not sufficient Customs and Border Patrol officers and agents at the border, correct? We need more resources, uh, and one of those resources is additional personnel, Senator. So why are you requesting a $3 billion decrease in the CBP budget for FY25? Uh, Senator, the, the, the construct that we uh, have proposed is a baseline budget plus a $4.7 billion contingency fund, and I am not certain that you are accounting for that $4.7 billion contingency fund in the gross amount that we are requesting for fiscal year 2025. That contingency fund is really the, the model is that additional funds would be released to us based on the number of apprehend, uh, encounters that we experience at the southern border. And so that $4.7 billion must be included when looking at our fiscal year 2025 request. Are those funds explicitly allocated and reserved for hiring and deploying CBP officers? They include our ability uh, yeah, to hire but, additional personnel. But it's funds personnel. that could be used for other purposes. I, I cannot, th this is a, an insufficient request of the U.S. Congress, given the severity of what we're facing at the southern border. I would be very, very pleased uh, to work with this committee and the Congress 
on increasing the resources above and beyond that which has been requested. So given uh, Senator, the urgency of the need, why did you not request more funding for Customs and Border Patrol? Senator, we work within uh, the context of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. We continue to believe that the extraordinary resources that would have been delivered on the, under the Senate's bipartisan legislation would have been transformative, not only in the provision of resources, but in the delivery of authorities that we currently do not yeah, have. Yeah, and I agree with you, but President Trump killed the bill for political reasons, and it's gone. You don't have a good faith partner in the minority here. Only you, through the funds that you request and use from the Congress in the appropriations process, and by using those authorities that there's discussion of you exercising, only you have the power to address this crisis, and I urge you, I urge you to act with utter urgency to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.